What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? We got a good one today, man. Welcome back, and hello to the new fans that are there. Jason Nash is on the show. Uh, the OG internet comedian Jason Nash. Been around for a long time, making people laugh on the interwebs. Check this dude out and check out his new podcast. Very funny dude. Also, got a special on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, come on, man. What are you doing? It's called Cheeseburger. Please go click on it and watch it. Put it in the background when you're cooking a dinner. Make yourself chuckle while you're making some linguine. Uh, please watch it and tell a friend. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, spread the word, will ya? Enough rambling from your boy. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. We it's just the met. first we time this met. gentleman's been on the show, <laughs> and he's such an old, old friend. We've known each other for 27 years. It's Jason Nash, everybody. <laughs> yeah, baby. We did just meet. We met. I, you know, I know you via the internet, right? Yeah, like, yeah, I know yeah. you via the internet, but we met for the first time at a luxurious Beverly Hills Christmas party. Yeah, um, I got. And let me tell you. Let's let's tell everybody exactly what happened. Call them out. Which is, I went that night. I got engaged. Yeah, congratulations. Thank by you. the way, everyone at home is saying congratulations at their computer, going congratulations. And, and I'm and I'm sitting there right after I got engaged, and I'm thinking, oh fuck, Tim Dillon's party is tonight. It's a big deal. Yeah, but I I just proposed. But when Tim Dillon says you got to come to the party, yeah, and I really wanted to go because like I, you know, I don't, I'm not in the comedy circle, you know, whatever, but I, right. but I, but I watch those shows and whatever. And I, and be, if I'm being honest, I'm like, I, I need guests for my podcast, right. you know? So I like, right after I proposed, I was like, Hey, uh, Tim Dillon's party is like <laughs> right down the street. <laughs> so you <laughs> pop the question, then you're like, we got to go to Dylan's house. And to her credit, um, and I said it like, I said it like, we don't have to go, you know, but she was like, no baby. She's like, you got to go. You got to go to that. And I you, was were, like, you were looking really sharp that night. <laughs> I was actually a little shocked when I saw you. Well, she's gorgeous, but that's that doesn't count. She's I'm great. talking about you. Oh, thank you. She's beautiful, but you, I was like, when I, when I saw you, I go, wow, does he look like this all the time? Like, Because you were so dressed in the nines, looking so sharp. And now I see you now and I go, right, he looks like a piece of shit most yeah, of the time. Yeah, 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 pasty. No, you know. no, but you look so sharp. And I was like, man, what is this? And then when you said you got engaged, I thought you meant it just happened recently and you went out to dinner i didn't know what happened that night no it happened that night and oh so and God. it was this thing of like you know it, it got it got to be that was my that was my christmas gift was the ring sure so so and she was like i want to do christmas gifts on the 21st and i'm going to give you your gift and i was like oh shit because i was going to wait maybe till we got to boston i was going to wait till new year's maybe so i was like i gotta do it and then that tim Dillon party and so then she just said yeah let's go she's like that's awesome and that's that cool. and that 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 told me right there i was like this person's unreal this is your wife like this is my wife like this is the fucking and of course we went in and um and she loves comedians too. The first thing she did was she saw Annie Lederman. Yeah. And she was, she loves Annie Lederman. Yeah. And she was just like, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. They became friends right away. And then I saw you and I was like, oh man, I would fucking love to have Andrew Santino on my podcast. Yeah. So I walked over to you and I was like, I talked to you and I was telling you how I watch Bad Friends and everything. And then you said you would do it. I go, yeah, I'll do it. And then what happened? I called you and I said, you got to come to mine. I'm leaving the country. <laughs> I was we, like, you're coming to mine. I'll do yours. It'll, we'll swap. We we'll had swap no, later. we had a date. We listen, did. We had a Monday. I had a listen, Monday. I had, I had a Monday and a Tuesday. I had Andrew Santino on a Tuesday. And then I had a huge guest on a Monday. Oh, wow. I'm not the huge guest. No. Thanks, fucking man. Trump's uh, Andrew. No, it, it was it, Donald Trump. <laughs> it was Donald Trump. Nice, yeah. It was a vodka. And, and, um, Monday comes, Monday cancels. Yeah. Tuesday comes, Andrew Santino cancels. That's right. Because yeah. he has to go uh -huh. be in a fashion show. Yeah, I got to be in a is fashion this show. What's, is this what I saw on Andrew Schultz's Instagram? Yeah. You had to go be in a fashion. I'm a fancy girl. What do you want me to say? They call me up. They say, hello, would you want to come to Paris to be in fashion show, uh, give you money and fly you here? And I said, absolutely. I said, I'm immediately going to call Jason and cancel. You, you can't. 
I didn't have a choice, man. They fly me to France. What are you going to do? Say no? You guys are comedians. You can't go to fashion shows. Yeah, I'm can. a piece of shit influencer. You go to fashion shows. I can shows. go to a fashion right, right. show, right? People already hate me. But we make fun of the thing. That's the best part. You make, well, it doesn't look that way. We were having fun. On the fun. Instagram, you're just having, you're on a private jet. <laughs> we are having fun. Um, we were having a lot of fun. So I saw that and I was like, okay. And then you called me again. You said, come here. And I said, can you do mine after? And you said, no chance, no. <laughs> no chance. I said, it's not going to work. I have to do so many before I go to Australia for two months. I've never been to Australia too. And so now I'm panicking. They called me and they were like, Hey man, uh, you know, we're doing the job, the job, you got the job. We're going to do the job in Australia. And I was like, great. You got a, um, you're an acting gig. I'm doing a movie. Yeah. For yeah. two months. And I was like, yeah, great. That's fine. Okay. So then I've got like, you know, a week to tie up loose ends. They're like, you're leaving in, in 48 hours. Yeah. So I was like, uh, uh, "What? Really? For for? Can I come back?" And they're like, "No, no, no. You're going. You're staying." I've never been, so it's also daunting, and I'm like, you know, trying to scramble and do everything. I think people in the business forget that you have a real life. They think you're just like, sitting that. in your house. I hate the way movies think that they're God. Oh well, to them they are. I hate that, and for that reason, I don't like to act. I don't like to go and sit. If I have to sit in it, last time I sat in a trailer, I was like, I am never doing this again. See, you know what's so funny is like I'm it. so go, 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 go between stand-up and podcasting and other acting jobs and touring and blah, blah, blah. When I get to go sit in a trailer, oh, it's heaven on earth. You like it. Well, dude, I get to just chill. I get to either read something or write stuff or work on a thing or just, honestly, this sounds so crazy, sit and think. Like, I get to sit and think Oh. For a couple hours because my mind is just like, it's just constant. It's constant, constant. Yeah. So when I get to do nothing, oh, dude, it's Will amazing. Will you do stand up down there? I might. I think. I don't know. Have you, you know, played like, down there before? Never. Dude, I've never, I've never been to Australia and I've been offered like four times to go do gigs and I've just, it's never worked. Yeah. It's so far. It's tomorrow. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they're like, it takes a day to get there. And then when you land, it's already tomorrow. So today it's already Sunday. Do you know what right, I mean? Right, right. So, uh, you know, I, I just, every time I got offered, I was like, that's, that's just so far. And it's like, then you have to spend, if you do go just for gigs, that I have friends that do, you got to spend like three weeks there to make it worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you have to tour all around the whole country and go to every major city. You can't, you can't just do it in like a weekend run. You know what I mean? <laughs> it can't just be like a pop in, pop out. It's not like I'm going to fucking Bakersfield, you know? <laughs> Which, by the way, shout out to Bakersfield. What a spot. What a spot. <laughs> underrated. <laughs> underrated. Really? Yeah, dude. Underrated. Bakersfield. I've underrated. I've driven through it. There's a cloud of I gotta like, tell you. brown Yeah, well, that's the cow, it's cow shit. Sitting over it. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah right. that's cow that shit. Smell. That's cow shit. Like when you go up the five and you go by the slaughterhouse. I love smell. it, dude. I pull over. I get out of the car and just... <laughs> I waft it in. No, you know what? I, I, I love stuff like that because it's so different from Los Angeles. Southern California is so... You know, I don't know, man. L.A. is so very L.A. Well, how so long have you been here? 17 years. Yeah, I've been And I'm ready to be done. Well, you're at a place now where you could go, right? That We all say that, don't we? But we don't mean it, do we? Well, how much does the podcasting do for you, honestly? It's amazing. It this really, is, is, it, it sells is, the tickets. It sells tickets. It's also a way to connect with my audience. It's continuing to, like, you know, grow within our community and help other comics. And there's so much about it that right. is a part of our world. And Zoom sucks. Let's play no games. No, no, no. I don't Zoom's do Zoom. bullshit. I don't do it. So, you know, I mean, it's an integral step in our growth of the community of comedy. And I think it's important because I like it. So it's hard. Like, I'm going to New York uh, for a while. Yeah. But I'll probably still come back here often. What are you going, what are you going for New York for? I'm kind of going to move there a little bit. Oh, so you are moving. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it just asked you that. <laughs> no, but I'm staying here. Do you know what I mean? Like, I have the, I'm going to keep my place here, but... I think what it really is, is my I wife doesn't, she doesn't want to admit you. that we're moving. So I have to keep, I can't say the word moving. Oh, 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 we're oh, going. Well, she for, likes LA. She, she's, it's just, she's got a great life and career here. So it's hard to rip her away from She's that. like a real person. She's a human being. It's like, so you're, you, you it's married like you're, a human, huh? Yeah, I did. Wow. Like your fiance, is she in the business? No. See, right, she's a well, human. Well, sort of, but no. She's, what does that mean? What is, <laughs> she's not in the business. You're like OnlyFans, but it's not like, it's not the business. <laughs> it's a business. No, she, she's just like. She has a podcast that she does, but she's just not interested in like in doing this really. Well, because it's think. it, you know. Or maybe you are, baby. We'll have to talk about it. I was just gonna say, she's have you thought about putting like, shelves on the wall? No, <laughs> no, because what if it's gonna fall on my head? You know, I watch your podcast. Like I watched yeah. the when you had the Sunny Guys on, yeah, because I love them. And this is new. This is newer. This is good. It was in the old room. Newer. The, yeah, it's newer. This the old room where we used to do the uh, the shoot was where 
uh, Rob Mack and and because uh, the Bad Charlie Friends Dead. set has all kinds of tchotchkes. Too much tchotchkes. But uh, you, but you're just going straight. You're saying I'm so funny. Yeah, I'm so I, funny. I just have a fucking blue wall behind me. Watch me now. <laughs> Watch me now. <laughs> right. Also, tchotchkes I used to have at the old studio, and I was always afraid something was going to fall on my head, and it was like this ma- this panic of what's going to fall down. Also, when I see podcasts with so much stuff on the wall, what's it back there for? It's for accoutrement. It's, it's for your eye, like when you're watching like a set. Watch me, baby. <laughs> you watch me. Even Rogan has cool shit behind it. Well, actually, he has a black no, he curtain. Doesn't. Oh, he's a he black has curtain. nothing. Well, yeah. he has a cool thing behind him. He has one piece, one piece, right, and nothing else. Right. Have you done Joe show? Uh, four times. Four times. No, no. Wow. <laughs> I've done it twelve times. Have you done it twelve? Twelve times. That's my goal. That's what I'm starting here today. I'm start. I hope I start here. Get to Rogan. Get to bad friends. Get to Theo Vaughn's yeah. and then to Rogan and then and that's it. I quit one and time. And that's it? Then, yeah, you yeah. Just, then you Birdman yourself? He kills himself live on YouTube. You guys got to watch it. I'm going to kill myself on Rogan. You should, I mean, that would be a way to go out. That get him be, some hits for that sure. That would be it. It's Spotify boost, baby. Um, I, Getting I, on I, Rogan I love him. Cool. I, yeah. I love him. I've, I've watched him for so long. And then, of course, you know, you, watch, you learn about all you guys from him. No, he was which a is great. Cool. He was a great... Um, uh, a great Papa Bear for all of us. He I did, said I said this to Fahim the other day. He was on my podcast, and I said, I said, you know, no one gives him credit for the fact that like he he's like a I don't how do you say it? He, he's sort of an alpha guy. He is definitely an alpha guy. So he's an alpha guy, and he I think he was the first one to be like to say like oh yeah hey I have. I have feelings or whatever, or to be able to like, to be introspective and be like an alpha guy. Like my father is fucking macho as fuck. Boston. Yeah. Boston. Like Boston tough, born and raised. Football yeah. fights. Uh, he's, don't be a fucking pussy, don't Jay. Be a, don't be a pussy all my life. Right. Shit like that. So I, when Rogan came around, I was like, oh good. This is a guy who's like my dad, but is saying, listen, yeah, you, we, we all can be critical thinking mm-hmm. and we can be, you know, we don't have to just be a fucking meathead. And I think there's a lot of, I grew up with a lot of meatheads and I think a lot of meatheads will have watched Joe and that they've been like, oh, okay. I, I you know, it's okay for me to have feelings. Right, you know, right, that, right. that's, that's basically what I take from him. I'm allowed to feel sad sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He gave yeah, the, yeah. he did give the, he did, he has kind of cued in on how to be a, a real man in his perspective is someone who can also be vulnerable about vulnerable about the reality of, you know, their children and their wives and their family and things they love. I think he's done a good job of doing that because it is very bro, 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 bro. Yeah. But yeah, he is. He's a good, it's a good balance. I mean, I've been friends with him for a while. It's wild watching him change and grow. I mean, that's, it's kind of nice to see that as we go on in the business. Like the one I found you, I think I first saw you truly on Vine. It's probably the yeah. first time I ever saw you. Yep. And it's funny to watch, like, even that group of people change uh-huh. over time because you guys all used to do stuff together. Like and then Batch and... Well, yeah, like, it, not just Batch, but then also, like, um, uh, uh, um, what's so the many. couple that got married now? They're two people that are together now. Uh, a boyfriend and girlfriend. They do a- videos Ariel together. and Matt? Exactly, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like, they're, it's they're really cool funny, to watch, yeah. like... From an outside perspective, I don't know any of these people. Mm-hmm. I just see them online and I watch them change and grow. And it is kind of wild because I saw you on there and that whole crew kind of everyone dispersed when Vine went away and did their own thing. And mm-hmm. did, like, was there anybody a part of that, those old days that you thought was going to be massive and just didn't continue or they quit or moved? Or did everyone? Yeah, like there was a kid in- named like Marcus Johns. Marcus Johns. And he was pretty much like the. He, I think maybe he had one, maybe the most followers, and then uh, and then I thought he was going to be like a literally Spider Man, <laughs> Marcus John. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and he yeah, just yeah. bailed. No, he's he's around. He still makes content. He's married. But I think you know what happens to a lot of people is a lot of people go, I don't need this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like right. like you and I, you know, as a comedian, and I used to do stand up and stuff, so I, I understand comedians a little bit. Like you know, don't, you have this need, right? To I have, like get to, up there to do and, stuff, to do stuff, and and to hear the audience, and you get that rush. Yeah, and and uh, I, I have a friend who's you know, um, pretty pretty famous from the internet, and he's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Like he doesn't want to do it anymore. Yeah, you well, know, yeah. like how old is he? Um, Can you say who it is. You're gonna be. No, gonna I don't be... want to say who it is, but and but but like, and maybe he will. Maybe he will keep doing stuff. But like, I, I get like that too sometimes. Like I'm like, I don't. 
Do I don't need this. Well, you make the joke a lot in your in a lot of the content, at least at least you used to, of like you're the old man in the group. Yeah. That's kind of like the yeah. the bit that you would run a lot. Well that what that's what happened. I did Vine. It it um I had three million on there and I was making some, some good money. I was making like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year just on brand deals and stuff from that's Vine. That's great, yeah. Like one year I think I made two fifty. And um and then it just went away. Yeah, like they one day they, they were just like, it's done. What you, what happened? The Twitter, uh, I, I don't know if Twitter bought it. They just couldn't, they just couldn't pay for it. They couldn't, Something happened they couldn't, it. they didn't have enough, uh, I'm going to say this horribly. They didn't have enough hard drives or they no. didn't have the money, the bandwidth <laughs> yeah. to keep all those videos up. Which is why Google bought YouTube. It's almost the exact same problem I think they had. Yeah, yeah, probably. YouTube couldn't, they couldn't con- keep up with the amount of data. Yeah, uh, they have to pay for all this data exchange, and it just was costing too much money. So Google was like, uh, "Right, we'll just buy it." So, so, so that was done, and so then I didn't have a job, and I was like, "Okay, what do I do?" And so then I was doing stand up at the Improv in the Little Room right. one and night, then, yeah. and then this um, this kid was in the audience, David Dobrik, right, and he was like, um, I think he was like twenty at the time, and I finished my set, and um, I did this whole set about you know, younger people and how much I hated them or whatever. And I, right when I walked up stage, he marched right up to me and he had his camera and he was just like, hey, can you come do that bit tomorrow on my podcast, on my uh, video? And um, and because I had done Vine and stuff, that was like a common thing that people would just come ask you to do one thing and then you'd never see them again. And you'd be like, yeah, sure, you know, right, of course. And then I went and did it and then um, we started filming uh, and then I did that for like four or five years just with him. Just with him? Yeah. That's kind of it's wild. Yeah. Well, how old is that guy now? David is 26. So you've been, okay, so it's been a minute with that. Yeah, dude. and so he's- um, Now with kid's got a pizza shop, dude. Can't, yep, he's got a pizza shop. Stopped. Dobrik's, go see it. It's great, great there's pizza. There's a line. Every time I go to the comedy store, there's a, there is a huge line yeah. outside. Yeah, be really be real with me. Yeah. How is the pizza? The pizza's fucking phenomenal. Don't do this if you don't mean it. No, it's fucking phenomenal. It's good pizza. It's so good. Now, it's, what did he do? Did he find someone to do? Because he's not a pizza guy. I- th- like how did he find a good chef? No, you know what? Do you know what? You ever heard of lemonade? The drink? Yeah. No, I've, no. The, the, my whole the, life. The, uh, the <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Lemonade? Lemonade? The company? Yeah, there's like lemonade. The restaurant. It's here in L.A. There's a couple of them oh, in lemonade. L.A. Lemonade. Yeah, it's the, so they're they're like gourmet it's, guys. It's like overpriced buffet. I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, now you have it's overpriced pizza. It's like ninety <laughs> ninety seven dollars for four <laughs> scoops of Brussels sprouts. No, I know lemonade. So he got yes. the lemonade guys to make a recipe. Smart. And and they worked on it for a couple of years. I mean, they put a lot of time into it, and they really they really labor over it, and they really want it to be quality. Yeah. And they've had offers to already franchise, and they won't because they they can barely handle what's going on on sunset right now because it's packed every time yeah so they're they're just focused on that and the pizza's phenomenal they they have this one thing it's called the doughy dobrik and it's got um like really like high quality like pepperonis with spicy honey mm, in the pepperonis spicy honey. it's it's phenomenal okay good it's really great well then go check i'll go check it out i am yeah, gonna go try, try it. Go every try time it. i walk by it i always think I just won't wait. I just can't do that. But I will get it at some when the, when it dies down a little bit. I'll, yeah, I'll sneak or in. just I'll text you. I'll have I'll have them send it over here. Oh, you're the best. See, if you were gonna franchise yourself into something like that, what's your move? What's the Nash restaurant? <laughs> what is it? Uh, do, I do Chinese food. I love Chinese food. Jason Nash's Chinese food. <laughs> yeah, Jewish Chinese food. Yeah, <laughs> Jew jo- um, Chinese. Yeah, yeah. By the way, there's a place that I went to in uh, in Austin. Uh, <laughs> It's a burger joint called Jew Boy, which I was like, no way, interesting, yeah, in Austin, yeah, dude. There's a, it's a, I'm really? giving them, a, I'm giving them a little bit of love. It was pretty good. I got suggested to go there from a friend of a friend because my special came out the day I was in Austin, and it's called Cheeseburger, and I was like, let's go have a cheeseburger for Cheeseburger Day, right? So, and you so go, me, me and my lady go up there to the and, anti-Semitic restaurant. Well, I was because immediately I asked the lady behind the counter, I was like, why is it called Jew Boy? I was like, because I don't really love the name. And she was like, (laughs) well, the owner is half Jewish, half Mexican. And it's a burger joint that has a Jewish root with a Mexican flavor menu. And it was pretty dope. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I still was, had a hard time saying Jew boy when I was, someone's like, where'd you go to lunch? You're like, Jew boy. They're like, all right, dude, slow down. Especially in the South. Cause you know, they're like going to Jew boy. Yeah. Get some Jew boy burgers, dude. That's that Louis bit where he's like, um. You know, Jew can be either a good word or a bad word. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, it sound. It, look, it sounded biting at first. And then you go in and you're like, I get the vibe. 
but uh, but it's still heavy handed. Like you can you could do a, a Jewish Chinese restaurant, but what would you call it? Jew- well, there is a Jewish Chinese restaurant on Fairfax. Genghis called- Cohen. Yeah, yeah, but I don't buy into it. It's mostly Chinese. Where's the Jewish part? Uh, that is that, just in that's LA. That's at the tables. It's just all Jews. Yeah, see, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. problem. You got the, I, the first time I moved to LA and I went there because I lived in West Hollywood for like twelve years. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a cool spin. Then you go and you're like, this is just Chinese food. Yeah, no, but it's good. Yeah, no, but where's the Jewish spin? What was the Jew it's part? kosher. Ah, come on. Yeah, I think it is. But give me something else. Give me some good jazz <laughs> That's not enough. There. It's kosher. That's not enough, That's not enough, enough for you. You Jews need to step your game up. <laughs> to do an ad with Kanye in the background now. Listen up, Jews. <laughs> No, but I, I, we can, we can make you a Jewish Chinese restaurant, but you, what, that's not original anymore because of Genghis. So how about we do, um, cause I'm going to invest in your franchise. Oh, great. Let's do Jason, J- Jason. How much money do you have? A, 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 like 4,800, 40, 4,900 bucks. 4,900 bucks. Is that not enough? <laughs> how much does it cost to do a franchise? Thousands? No, I was just asking how much money you actually have. How much money do I actually have? Yeah. I, that's, I tried to enough to enough to um, enough to f- not worry about rent anymore. Oh, I'm sure it's that's more a good that. number. I'm no, sure it's, it's not that much. That. Why do you have a lot of money? Are you a rich guy? I did. You used to have a lot of money, <laughs> and then what happened? When I was doing YouTube and it was like flying high, yeah, I did. Yeah. And now I'm like, eh. Now it's fine. Yeah, it's it is. It's like eh, I have I have two. Well, employees. now you're gonna get married, dude. So f- get ready. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now your money is everybody's. Money. I have two employees too. So two that, humans work for you full time. Yeah. What are we talking? Assistants or? Uh, well, one is a like really high level uh, producer editor, and the other is an alcoholic. No. Um, no well, you got to have one around. No, no, she's great. Uh, no, and the other is just like a producer. I have two producers. Full and they're full time. Uh, yeah. That's hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Keep them employed. No, but it's it's really good. Like I I, I like doing it that way because uh, I realize I, I just can't do it by myself. I'm just not that. I'm not a good editor. Well, you're a busy man. Yeah. You have a lot to do. You have a life. You have kids. You have a, you know what I mean? That's that's a we busy. Ju- we just did like a a roast of one of my friends, and it was it was it was pretty like you know high level production. Who was the roast on? Uh, Zane Hijazi. Do you know you know Heath and Zane? Yeah, of course. You know Heath. He's yeah. on the show. Yeah, I know him. Yeah, so we did Zane and Heath roasted, and uh, and it came out great, and it was number one trending on YouTube, and um, but we worked on it for like six months, and where'd you guys shoot it? Um, uh, kiss, kiss, bang, 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 bang. Isn't that such a cool word? That is a cool word. Yeah, yeah, it's like Korea. It's a movie, Town. right? Wasn't there a movie, Kiss, Kiss, Bang, Bang? Yes. Yeah, I was just gonna say. Yeah, but it's not. It's down in Koreatown. It has like an ATM bank vault. To oh open yeah, the door. dude. I think I've been there before. Yeah, yeah, it was good. I've been there before. And then we want to do another one, but. I gotta find. It's hard to find somebody to do it. Did you it. write your own shit, or did you hire people to write for you? No, we wrote it. You wrote everything on your own. No, no, not on writers. my own. Uh, me and Brandon Calvillo um, wrote most of it, and then a lot of the a lot of the people who roasted wrote their own stuff. That's good. And it was it was pretty good. Like I w- I would wonder to see what you thought of it. I brought in um, uh, a couple of comedy store writers for the last one, and um, and they were great. And then this time I just didn't have the budget. So I was like, okay, we'll write it. You'll do it solo. I'd be interested to see what you think of it. You should watch it. Yeah, I do want to see. I saw clips of it online actually because of Heath. I think uh, I saw a few things pop up and he just, I was following his story. He just went overseas and did like a whole vlog about getting his hair done and all this stuff. And that was like, yeah, yeah. It was like the next video below the roast. And I was like, what is this about? And he's like documenting his his hair journey, which I think is very funny. We saw, we went to Whitney's Roast at the comedy store. Yeah, how was that? Bert. It was great. Yeah. It was great. She asked me to go and wear a wedding dress and marry somebody. And I couldn't, I couldn't say no fast enough. I was like, absolutely fucking Lily not. <laughs> Fuck that. She, she was like, it's for OnlyFans. And she's speaking a mile a minute like I do, but she does it in a way that's like, she might also attack you. So I, luckily I was like, I can't, I just, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I yeah, couldn't, she, I was like, I can't do yeah, it. Yeah, she was on one that way. She's on one a lot. She's always, <laughs> she's humming, dude. She's spinning like a fucking top. She said hi to me. I was like, it was really cool. My fiance thought that was cool. And um, and I'll tell you what's interesting is, is cool that she did it on OnlyFans because what you can say on YouTube now is so, so minimized. We know, dude. It's It's been a thing. It's been a conversation. Oh, we, we've been getting hit all the time. It's so crazy. We've had the calls with the, the, the YouTube coordinators. Yeah. And, for the fans at home that don't know, like basically what happens is we get, you know, they they log you, they log your level of monetization, which uh, is basically them deeming you unviewable for certain age ranges. And what that means is, in a business sense, 
they can't sell advertisements on your shit mm -hmm. because you cuss or you talk about uh, sultry topics. And so they don't want anybody under 18 being able to click it. And for them, they're like, well, we're not going to fucking make any money. So fuck you. I call the rep and this is what's really funny. And is, they lie to you, by the way. They're full. They're full of shit. No, no. I'm, I'm usually at fault because I'll call the rep and I'll be like, what the hell? I'm like, it got demonetized, whatever. And he'll be like, okay, okay, let me try to fix it. The rep is great. Yeah. And then he'll he call me back the other day. He's like, you have a fucking sex toy ad <laughs> in the middle yeah. of the show. <laughs> but everybody likes those. <laughs> it is true. We have, we've, had, we've gotten clipped. Yeah, yeah. Well, ours used to be, we said, because, you know, the show is, is sponsored and usually, what we usually do on the show is have a drink. Are you, so, are you sober, by the way? Uh, no, but I'm Jewish, no. so I don't really, I don't have the taste for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it has nothing to do with I'm drinking. Like That's sober. so funny. Do you drink? No, I'm Jewish. <laughs> In here, we pour whiskey. Hey, 42%. That is almost half for those of you that are counting of men experienced moderate to extensive hair loss in their entire lifetime, all right? There are options available to help stop balding right in its tracks. Uh, the sooner a person starts treatment for hair loss, the easier it is to keep the hair that they have. That's why I'm telling you about Roman. Roman offers clinically proven medication to help treat hair loss, all from the comfort and privacy of your own home. You're embarrassed about it? Don't be. It's common. Who cares? They offer prescription medication, over-the-counter treatments as well. They also, uh, they also offer specially formulated shampoos and conditioners. Ingredients that are going to help fortify, moisturize, and lock in that fuller hair. 80% of men who use prescription hair loss treatment had no further hair loss after two years. Pretty good numbers. So, if you're getting a little thin, a U.S. licensed healthcare professional is going to work with you to find the best treatment plan. It's a free online visit. What do you got to lose? They start at 20 bucks a month on a quarterly plan. Get involved if you see it getting a little thin up in the wheat stack up top. Right now, Roman has a special offer for our listeners. Uh, you're going to use the link in the description to get 20% off your first order. Just go to ro.co slash whiskey today. That's ro.co slash whiskey for 20% off. Bespoke Post, baby. I've talked about them in the Box of Awesome for so long now because I really love this stuff. It's great as a gift. Uh, it's also great for you yourself if you uh, want to just give yourself something. Uh, you go to uh, boxofawesome.com. You take a little questionnaire, not a quiz, and your answers are going to help them formulate the best box of awesome that's right for you. They release new boxes every single month across a ton of different categories. Each box is valued around $70, uh, but you're going to pay a fraction of that. 90% of everything that comes in your box of awesome is from a small and up-and-coming brand, which I am a big supporter of. The Carnivores with the last box they sent me. That's got that barbecue rub made in the Great American Spice Company in Rockford, Michigan, baby. The mitten, as it were. Uh, also, uh, the Hawker uh, and the gadget, the multi-tool gadget, the Swiss Army knife, so to speak, is what they gave me as a little thank you for the continuation. And I thank you guys over at Bespoke Post. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code whiskey at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com. The code is whiskey for 20% off your first box, boxofawesome.com. That code is whiskey. Go and get yourself a box of awesome for you or a friend and enjoy some locally made stuff. Ginger. I like gingers. <laughs> that was like this kid, uh, uh, Jordan Firstman. Do you know Jordan Firstman? Do you know no, who that is? Oh, man, he's so is. fucking funny. He's a great actor. He's in that new show. Or that new movie, uh, You People, Jonah Hill's new movie. I just watched it last night. He's in that. He's uh, he did uh, he did a small he did a role in Dave on the show, and uh, he had a joke that made me laugh so hard it'll never make the cut. I think because we were bantering, but the one guy is rambling on and kind of questioning his positioning, and and he says uh, he goes are you are you. <laughs> He's, he goes, are you Puerto Rican? He goes, I'm gay and Jewish. It's kind of the same thing. And he threw it away so fast. <laughs> I died. La Dude, he got This was me. on set? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It but was it in a scene. It, we were it in didn't the make it. I don't think it will because that's, that banter uh, isn't a part of the other thing that we were doing. Did you ever take acting classes? Because mm -hmm. you, 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 you act so well and you're Thank in you. so many cool things. And I, di I, di I never took a traditional acting class. No way. No, 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 no. No, I've never gone to a class that with other people. That pisses me off because I've, I've gone to I've, so many acting classes that I was like, oh, my God, I'm so bad at this. Well, I've had humans help me, but that's different. Like, who, who helped you? Like one-on-one -on -one sessions, you know? Oh, 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 oh. But I've never gone to a traditional class. Like if there was something I really wanted someone to help me learn something about, yeah, that I'll hire someone for that. Did you Have you ever gotten any cool advice from like – a cool, I don't know, like someone you're on the set that's like famous, like, I mean, like the sunny guys, they ever teach anything? I mean, those guys, I mean, those guys like, you know, becoming friends with them is kind of a wild world because you learn that, you know, we're all the same in a weird way. Like we're all kind of creating what we think is funny. Right. And hoping it works. And when it does work, it's 
like lightning in a bottle, particularly for those guys. I mean, they, that goal of that show for them from the jump was like, how funny can we make each other? How much can we make each other fucking laugh? Right. This like, you know, it's like, it's kind of, it's honestly, it's like what you're creating with your friends. It's like, yeah. How can we do that and format a fucking wackadoo show about it? Uh And I think the thing that I learned from those guys is, uh, they are all, I don't know if Max said this to me or, or Charlie, but have people that are, that you are kind of jealous of their humor, like around you or in the room. Like uh, in your mind that you're like, I think this guy's way funnier than me or way right, better writer than I am. Right. You know, that's an old adage is like, don't be the smartest person in the room. But it's kind of true in comedy too. It's like you no, you can't be the person in the room who thinks they're the best writer and the funniest uh-huh. and it's your show. Uh-huh. That, that's a failure immediately. I mean, Seinfeld probably taught us, if, if anything, and no one's really taken the ball and run with it since him, truly, in the sitcom world, on that show, he was the least funniest part of the show. By a landslide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. G- George was funnier. Kramer was funnier. Elaine was funnier. You know, it was like he knew how to be his version of funny. I'm not taking anything away from him, but he surrounded himself with just brilliance. Yeah, yeah, So it yeah, only yeah. made him funnier. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think the fault of comedy often, I guess what this all ties into is we have such egos as comedians or comedic personalities or performers that you don't really want someone to outshine you because you're like, it's my show. You're like, it's the Jason Nash show. I don't want fucking someone else to yeah. be the guy that did, takes the thing. But that's foolish because it's only going to make you look even better. Uh huh. I mean, look at a guy like Bateman. Arrested Development was so good because he was a straight man. He was hysterical. Yeah. But it's because you had all these other great nuanced characters around Someone's you. Someone's got to ground it down. Yeah, there's got to be some. There's got to be. Remember s- news radio? Oh, I love news radio. That was Rogan. That was and, and that was Dave show. Foley. Yeah, Foley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah. you got to have something that pulls everything back to earth a little bit. Yeah, but that's the problem a lot of times in modern comedy, and I think it transfers over into the digital world. Everybody wants to be funny. We all want to be the the best of the thing, but it's it's there's a rhythm to it that makes it. But Sonny actually doesn't have anyone grounding it down. Yeah, I think D does it pretty well, but they all kind of change hands on who's the grounded one each episode. Right. right? Like Charlie is typically, you know off the rails. You're right. But every episode, somebody has to be a little bit down to earth. And then they'll have episodes where Caitlin is insane. Mm -hmm. And then they'll have episodes where, you know, Mac is a little bit more centered. It just, I think they change hands when they do that. But that show's rare, man. That's impossible. Yeah. To do, to do, to do that again would be, I don't know if you could ever do that again. And there's not many shows out there anymore. Like, do you get, have you ever been offered like your own sitcom and stuff like that? I had a chance when I tested for SNL, I did, uh, I got an NBC deal, uh, to do a show. So you tested for SNL. Did you do characters? Did you do your impressions? I did characters and I did a little bit of kind of stand up bits. I auditioned a long time ago. Oh, you did? Same, year? same year Fallon auditioned. No shit. You could have been Jimmy Fallon. No. <laughs> Late night with Jason Nash. <laughs> no, Would you ever no. do that? Would you ever host a thing? Host a show? Yeah. Like host a, host a late night. Um, yeah, sure, but I mean, well, you wh- say, yeah, why? sure. I, well, I'm saying no. I would say no. That's not my ilk. I would never. This is about as close to hosting a thing as I'd want to be. Yeah. If I can sit one on one without an audience, without people, there's no need for it anymore. Well, there's a need for that thing to exist. But why would you want to go t- to CBS and take the 12:30 slot? Like, why? I mean, I so think you could have do, a staff. Well, I think people do it for money. Yeah, and convenience. It's easy. You know, like we, we, you don't have to do anything but show up. I mean. I shouldn't be diminutive, but but then, then there's a lot now, of people. Now helping. you're in there and you're you're talking to people you don't want to talk to. Your show is cool. You're talking to people that you want to talk to. That's a fact, yeah. And so I just don't think that I don't think they're going to be around soon. You might be right, but also it may just morph into something else. You know, if Theo Vaughn gets fucking two, three million views on his podcast. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. insane. Yeah, and he doesn't even speak English. <laughs> it's, it's it's crazy. I want to dig more into you. Okay, I want to dig you out. Yeah. Born in Boston, when, in. when did you move here? I moved here, oh, fuck, man, right around, right around 2001. Like, uh, uh, I remember I got here and the World Trade Center happened, so I missed it. That's your fault. Yeah. That was all your fault. Yeah. You left and like, he's gone, we can do it now. They waited for you to leave? That's insane. That's <laughs> yeah. so funny. Yeah. To think that they waited for you to leave before they did it. They weren't going to do it when I was on the East Coast. Yeah. Yeah. So you got here. I went to the beach that day. You did. How yeah. was it? It was a nice day? <laughs> most tragic day in American history. I remember my ex-wife was so pissed at me that day. She's like, where are you? And I'm like, we're at the beach. We're hanging. 
Yeah. Do you know the World Training Center, fella? You're like, <laughs> you know the waves are beautiful right now? I mean, the break is perfect. Because <laughs> what can you do? You're on the West Coast. Nothing. You call everybody. Everybody's yeah. fine. Yeah, we're I mean, okay, who we're I okay. knew at least. Right. You yeah. know, nobody I knew was... I was in Chicago as a kid where I grew up, and when it happened, uh, this, is how, this is how narcissistic we are. I immediately thought, well, they're going to hit Chicago next. <laughs> yes, yes, That was yes, immediately yes. my, oh, we I got to hit Chicago. Too. Yeah. Of course, like, the terrorists have, they're like, Chicago, no, <laughs> fucking why? Aren't you, aren't you shocked that, like, there aren't more terrorist events? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Listen up, terrorists. There should be more. <laughs> what are you guys doing? You guys hanging out? <laughs> you sleeping on the job? <laughs> I, sometimes I am. You know, so, uh, one time I was really stoned at, a, at an NFL game. Yeah. And, and I looked around and I was like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's so many people. This is this yeah. this, this isn't this would be a terrible, perfect place for some psychopath to do something at, awful. At the Grove on like December 23rd. That one I'm kind of for. I'm not gonna lie. That one's <laughs> a, no. <laughs> like you I do that too. I'll be walking with my kids in the Grove and I'll be like, oh fuck. Like this is this is prime time. Like because you're trapped, right? Like yeah. that's that's what's scary is like there's that's why I don't like festivals. I don't do massive concerts anymore. I'll go to a show, right? Like if it's one band, yeah, love it. I can't do like, it's a multi-day, multi-band event where you're stuck. And if anything bad happens, you're fucked. Like, no way. <laughs> right. I, I went to Coachella four, like three or four, one of the earliest ones, because I worked in the music industry when I first moved out here as a day job. And they gave us VIP passes because we were rep, we were repping, um, I don't even know, maybe it was Cypress Hill at the time. And they were like one of the, like, like pop in throwback acts or something yeah, like that. Cypress Hill, yeah. And they brought us backstage and back then. VIP was like, um, you know, on movie sets, the nicer urinals. Do you know the ones that have like a sink mm-hmm. inside? Oh, yeah, yeah, It yeah, was yeah. just that. Steps that, up to right, it. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. That was VIP back yep. then. Yeah. And then that year, I, I, it was just, even that was overwhelming. And then next year, I remember there was an LA Times article that said double the tickets were sold for the very next Coachella. That, that's when it started like explode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I never, ever went back. I was like, no fucking way. Yeah. Do you do that shit? You like festival type of stuff? Yeah, Burning I Man? have to go for content and stuff. Yeah, see, dude. Like Burning Man? I've been to Burning Man, but a long time ago. That was when you were trying to like center your chi or some shit, trying to find yourself? No, no, I went for Comedy Central. We went, went and made like, made like a video. I'm never going to like do my chi or whatever. I'm going to like make content. What, make do, you, what do you, okay, and, so this is a real question then. When are you doing shit for you, for real, outside of content? Are you? Oh, I work. I started working out this year. I know. So, I see on the internet, dude. So that's my. You think thing. I'm not liking those pictures? I'm double tapping, dude. <laughs> I see you jacked up. I see it. What changed that you were like? I'm gonna work out more. I felt like shit all the time. Do you eat? Sh- did you eat shitty food? Mm, yeah, I have like a real food problem. Like I don't drink and I don't do drugs, but I like. I'll like tear through like food at like three in the morning. What's your sad meal? What's the thing that if you're bummed out and you're like, I'm just going to be a piece of shit and I'm going to eat this. Queen's and- chicken, chicken with broccoli oh. back to the, the Jewish Chinese food restaurant. Just scarfing just, it down. Yeah, I just love it. I just love it. I was fat when I was a kid. And then, so now I'm just like, so now I don't, I have like a very strict eating regimen. I don't eat till three o'clock. Every day? Yeah. Every day. Why? Uh, I try to do intermittent fasting. Oh my god! So I will try to eat for eight hours, but it's it, it, it it's a it's a vanity thing for sure. Like yeah. it's fun to look good, you know, you feel good. But honestly, you just feel better. Like just going upstairs. I like I'm way older than you, so it's like how old are you? I'm 49. That no, you're not. I'm 40. What do you mean? That's not. Well, that's way older than you. Oh, it is. Yeah, oh, 10 shit. years. Because you'll say see. <laughs> Bobby's 51. So yeah, I was looking at him the other day, and I was like. Damn, he looks so fucking good. Because Asians... He looks young. Yeah, well, because he has no worries. You have kids. <laughs> you have a family. You have things that have... Co- co- you know what I mean? Your life is real. He has yes, no life. Yes, yes. Yeah. He has no fucking kids. He has no kids. Portnoy he has said this to me. Uh, Dave Portnoy talks about me sometimes on his podcast, and he was saying that what, first he said I looked like shit, which I did. And then I like got in shape and then they brought me up again. And he was like, ah, I think he looks like shit still. He's like, he looks what weird. A dick. Right. And um, which is all fun. Like, I love him. But, uh, but I said that to him when I was on the show, I was like, you don't have fucking kids, Dave. Like, right. you know, you, you got a great life. You go from Miami to the, to the Hamptons. Dubai or whatever yeah, the fuck. Yeah. yeah. Like, you he's know. He's a young guy too, though. He's only 40 something. He's like 44, like 44 yeah. 43. Yeah, he's a young like guy. He's pretty young. You're young too, though. So you say old because that's part of the bit with those other young guys, but you only say that because you're surrounded by 25 year olds. Well, yeah, that, that became the bit in the videos was like the old guy. And but I think that seeps into reality and part of your brain. Oh, That's yeah, why yeah, you yeah, just yeah. said that. You're like, I'm old, man. 49 is not fucking old. You're not yeah. old. No? You got 20 years left. 
That's it. <laughs> I put, put, put it into perspective. You zoom in on your face. What? 69. I'm going. No, you got a long time to go. You got a long time to go. I don't know, man. You do. I think you do. I think you looked very happy with your new wife, by the way, or your new fiance. I, I, I don't like the word fiance. Sorry, but. Your new wife, unless you're gonna, unless you're gonna Fiance bail. Fiance is such a pretentious word. It's a stupid word. We should find an American. We should find an English word that makes up for interim wife. I, and I and I'm torn because I she loves when I say it, and uh, but then I know when I say it to people like, oh, can my fiance come? It's like it asks people. It begs them to be like, congratulations. And I don't need them to say congratulations, but right. I have to say fiance. If I say girlfriend, then that, then people are gonna be like, well, what the fuck? You're not engaged. You're what not. If you you're just not say wife me? already. Do you feel like not you married yet? But what's the difference? Who cares? You're gonna get married. Like I said, unless you're pulling the ripcord halfway through. <laughs> when did you get married? Six years ago. Oh, so pretty new. No kids yet. No kids. No. Uh, Maybe gonna, never. You're gonna have kids. We'll see. Give me yours. <laughs> you know what I really want? I don't. I want to adopt like a 15 year old, so I have like three years left to raise them. That's all I really want. <laughs> That's really cool. My kids are 14 and 17, and so it's, I'll adopt your kids. It's the best time. You Give can, me your kids. I'll adopt them. I'll, I'll pay you for can, them. For th- you can adopt my kids. They won't fucking talk to you. That's great. That's what I want. <laughs> Three years of kids that don't talk to me, but also this is probably the most expensive time they're entering because they're going to college and all that stuff. And Yeah, I, I was thinking the other day, I was like, you know how like kids come out when they're like 25 and they like confront their dad and they're like, you know, you weren't around or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm going to fucking do that to my daughter in like 10 years. You, you weren't present as yeah, a daughter. Yeah, just be like, you know. That's smart. I really could have used you. Right. <laughs> during this time. Like you were she, a she, shitty won't talk, she won't talk to me. Well, because. And, 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 and I don't want to paint her as like a, She's all, she's, she, I, I, no, I'm sorry. She does talk to me. She's just so busy. She's just like, she's like 20. She, she actually, she's like 30 and she's like 14. But what does she want? Yeah, you heard her on the phone when she called. Yeah. Right? She sounded like an adult. She was sick. <laughs> she was like sick of your shit. Yeah. She was like, why are we going to that thing? And you're like, well, well it, it could be, it could be. Uh, the thing. And she's like, okay, I'm I, going I, to, I'm supposed to, my mom flew in to go to this 80 for Brady thing. There's a new movie with yeah. Tom Brady. When does that Ford. come out, by the way? Is that out? I don't know. The premiere's on Tuesday. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. it's out. And so they they said, oh, you, you want to have your mom fly? We'll fly your mom out and she'll, she'll get to go. My mom loves Tom Brady. Like it's- Is he going to be there? He's going to be there on Tuesday. Oh, wow. So we're already kind of hoping we can get a picture or some, just some interaction. Because if my mom can, if my mom can get in his presence- he will lock in with her. Yeah, the she's, trick, she's that type of person. Well, because the trick is the film is about older women meeting Tom Brady. Right. You can fuck off. I can fuck off. But she needs to sneak in there. Yeah, so we're going to be on the carpet, and we've already picked her outfit out, and we're hoping we get a moment for the, for the vlog. That's so cute, It'll man. be really cute. So there's a second event today where we go to a tailgate. He won't be there. No. But I was trying to get my daughter to go. You heard it on the phone. Yeah. And, and, and I told her exactly what it was. Didn't cool care. event. Paramount Pictures. Yeah. Free food. Why not? I say, you can bring your friends. You could bring a couple of your friends. What's missing here? And then she just goes, nah, just doesn't sound like something I'd be into. Well, she, or, she, it, she grew up in LA. Yeah. So it, they're used to this shit. I guess. And even like the YouTube stuff, like, you know, we, we, there's pretty cool shit going on. You yeah. know, like people will, people will bring a fucking, uh, I don't know, like a talking parrot over to David's house or something, uh-huh. like, which I think is fun. It is cool. And I'm like, you want to go see the talking parrot? Nah. Uh-huh. Good. I like her. She's cool. She gets it. <laughs> She's above all the bullshit. She's, She's like, I don't need all, all that. Well, yeah. but I think it's also because they're used to that lifestyle in, in a sense of it, it. it's not that they're over it. It's just that it's like, well, it just, just doesn't match with what she needs. And because it's not unusual, it just doesn't really. It is unusual. It's a it, talking parrot. I know, dude. But it, but she sees she lives with you. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't she know. sees your bullshit How all the time. Get to see a talking parrot. I'm giving a really bad example. There's never been a talking parrot. I'm trying to think of something cool that was at the at the at like, you know, like Fifty Cent came and performed once. Sure. Like, you want to watch Fifty Cent? No. No. Well, she's probably weary. He got shot so much. She doesn't want to get in there. <laughs> doesn't want to be in bed with somebody like it. Right, the, fir- right. the first PA job I ever had, they had 50 Cent on this show with them. And um, I remember watching him. I was like 26 or something like that. And I, and I, I remember watching him at this party, this ho- ho- high-end Hollywood party with all these like very rich, ritzy people. And I was like driving one of the guys that night, I think. And um, I remember like watching him just chum it up with these Hollywood producers. And I couldn't get out of my mind that as, as a young man, all I knew of him was like, he was like the, the head of gangster rap at the new generation. Yeah. And I was like, dude, this guy's a gangster that's been shot in the fucking face. Yeah. And he's just shaking hands with these Hollywood bigwigs. Yeah. It was just such a weird juxtaposition of coming where I came from. It was like, I didn't understand Hollywood shit. And then you see it and you're like, 
oh wow, this is all a stage a little bit. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Him getting shot was obviously very real. Right. But it was so surreal to watch a guy who was like a certified street gangster accredited just chilling with- But that goes a long way in Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood yeah. Hollywood people are, are very charmed by anything authentic. Well, he's real as fuck. So that, that's why, that's why, you know, like uh, those gangster movies do so, like Robert De Niro movies, stuff like that. Yeah. Like that when, when Hollywood can get something real, they're just like, oh yeah, whatever you want. And he's very charming too. Well, he's actually, he's super talented. It's beyond that. But it was just so like, it is wild to see how Hollywood does, they do love those kind of stories. We like rags to riches or whatever you want to call it, but they love to see someone like rise from nothing and have something kind of tragic and awful. Cause mm -hmm. at face value, if I told you, Hey man, we're trying to put this guy in a movie. He's been shot in the face nine times. You'd be like, <laughs> I don't know. Do we want him over at the house? <laughs> like that would fucking scare the shit out of you. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. he was just a, you know, like they understood that like, well, he obviously has ability and talent that goes way beyond yeah. to get to where he got to. After all that trial and tribulation. Yeah. Well, it's just, I mean, in some ways, selling drugs is the hardest job. It's got to be. Right? Well, but everybody wants it. I guess the product moves itself a little bit. <laughs> Getting away from the cops is tough, I guess. Did you ever do drugs as a little kid? Were you a troublemaker when you were a young lad? I did. Um, you were fat. I like that I was part. fat. Maybe we used to smoke weed, done some coke, did some acid. Oh, I did acid once, and that really changed my brain. As a young man? Yeah, I was like 21. And I, um, I used to love sports. I used to like Boston sports and everything. And then I did acid when I was at UMass. And um, I swear to God, the next week I picks up, I picked up the sports page, and I was just like, I used to read the actual sports page, mm -hmm. and I was just like, nope. never again. Acid made you hate sports. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what? <laughs> what? What am I doing? I don't know these people. That's an ad for uh, don't do drugs. Don't is, do drugs. Do you want to not like sports anymore? <laughs> they say Whitey Bulger did acid in prison and turned him into a killer. It made him a it murderer. It made him a psychopathic murderer. Yeah, I mean, I, I imagine you could get to a place of psychosis and break with acid. That's why I'm yeah. not a— You ever I do did, acid? Yeah, I did it once in high school. Oh, you did? Twice, maybe? <laughs> once or twice. I didn't like it at all. Oh, I loved it. Mushrooms I loved very much. Yeah, mushrooms are fun. But mushrooms I feel like I got more connected with uh, me. Acid felt very disconnected. It felt very like— Oh yeah, staticky and dirty, and I didn't like acid it. Acid and mushrooms felt the same to me. Just acid was longer. Really? Mu see, mushrooms felt I felt way more at peace. You ever hallucinate on acid? On m mushrooms and acid? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. my me god. Too. Yeah. Oh me my too. god. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a lot of. <laughs> I, I went over to my buddy. Uh, we used to call this kid Chauncey. We used to call him Chauncey in high school. That wasn't even his name. His name was Mike. I don't even know why we got Chauncey was a nickname we gave him for some reason. It was probably mean, but we went over to his house when we were on shrooms, me and my buddy Tyler. And we go down to the basement and his dad had a framed Gretzky jersey in his basement. But I it, love where this is going well, already. Well, it was- A framed Gretzky jersey. It, it was jersey. a framed Gretzky jersey in his basement. And- <laughs> Of course, uh, it's pride and joy. And it was like, yeah, it <laughs> yeah. was. It, and it was, it, was, it was situated in the case in a way where it almost looked 3D, as if a body could be in it. Dude, <laughs> and a body was in it. In my mind, a body, Gretzky was like in that jersey. I was like, Wayne's chest is in that fucking case, dude. <laughs> and everybody was like, you're out of your fucking mind. Relax. I'm like, Wayne, is it? it's breathing. I, I swear to God, in my mind, I saw the jersey moving in and out. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. Part of his soul is still left in that jersey. I remember even after stop, I was done tripping, I still did think part of your soul is left in all the all of the clothing that you've ever worn. When you, when you give a shirt to like Goodwill, the next person that has it has a piece of your soul is embedded in the fabric. They, it was, it was such like a hippie, out of mind thought that I saw, stayed with me. I, I saw Jacob Dylan on the cover of a Rolling Stone in the bathroom sing One Headlight to me. One Headlight. For, oh, literally yeah. for like three minutes. And I grabbed the magazine and I was like, and I brought it to my friends and I was like, I'm not fucking kidding. I'm like. Jacob I, singing. Jacob Dylan is singing. <laughs> like just such a weird. <laughs> yeah, but that tune was in your head for a while. Though, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now can you not hear that song ever again? No, I love that song. You I do? I love Jacob Dylan, yeah. What other songs did he do that I would know? He has a song. He did a cover of Heroes by uh, David Bowie. It's really good. Yeah, but that's Bowie's song. What other, what other, did he do have another song of his own that hit? Just one headlight. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. Uh, what you, what but isn't that, isn't that magic, though, that you could make one like beautiful song and it can last decades and decades? Like imagine, yeah, yeah. He imagine one doing one piece of content for YouTube and it lasting... Oh yeah, forever, and you can play it forever, and never having like to that do that one ever joke again. that you have that you have one to get rid joke. of. One joke, one joke, one. You go out and tell one joke. That's the hardest thing about what we do comedically is like, you know, not to give us credit, but it's like we have to continue to keep changing and growing and writing new shit so much that you sometimes don't even get to enjoy 
some of the jokes that you write that you love because they've got to be gone at some point and re- make new shit. How do you know? How do you that? I always wonder that. How do you know when you're like, I'm going to take this joke out? You know, it's so weird, dude. Does so it just starts dying with the audience? No, it's just instinct. Like you kind of, you know, you know that you're not telling it the way you used to tell it. You may say the words the exact mm. same way, but I'm telling you something in your internal rhythm. Ah. Uh, you check yourself. You go, this is, I don't fucking. Have you ever had another comedian come up to you and go, hey, how come you don't do the fucking uh, airline bit anymore? 100%. Yeah. And, I've had, you, I've and had, you go, it's just, I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. I've had friends be like, I, lo- I used to love that joke. Yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah, damn, it, man. It's done. Yeah, because when you put it to bed, you have to put it to bed. That's so interesting. Like, my special that's out right now uh, on Netflix, I I can't do any of those jokes anymore. Not because it's, like, against the rules, but I just don't want to do it anymore. I feel like that's, like, the way to just go, it's the stamp to be like, good night. Yeah. It's done. You got to put it to bed. That's weird because I make the same YouTube video every week. (laughs) Same exact (laughs) one. (laughs) Um, When, When do you think, when do you think you'll, like you talked about, stop morbidly transition away from YouTube? Or just stop making content. I mean, if if my dream, <laughs> yeah. What is I your hate, dream? I hate to. Say, no, hate, what is for real? What is this. your ultimate dream? My dream would be to like in in 2019. I did 31 stand up shows. 31. Yeah. Where'd you? What? Where? Just I, like around town? No, 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 no. I did. Uh, I did Austin, Dallas, uh, fucking Houston. I did. I went to uh, Tacoma. I, I went around the country. Right. And I was able to fill like 300 seats. It's good. It's not good. Let me let me finish. It's good for where you're at, <laughs> dude. So I was able from the YouTube audience to, and then, and I thought I was doing good. And then my agent came to the, uh, the improv down in Irvine <laughs> and he was like, no, it's not happening. <laughs> He's like, we're not going to book you anymore, man. No, he was, he was like, he'll keep booking me. Yeah. No. But he was, I was like, so what did you think? And he was like, uh, you know, and I thought I was doing fine. You know, sure. like, I'm sure you were doing fine. I wasn't. And, uh, I, I mean, they, they, it was, I think I was up there for 32 minutes, you know, 28 minutes. No, I was probably up there for 40 minutes, whatever. Okay. And then I would do like a, a meet and greet or whatever. And, uh, but that would be my dream really is to like, uh, try stand up again and do a show and, and, and try, but it's just, that's another different life. Man. I'm it's just too well adjusted life. to my life now. Right. You know what I mean? Like I, I, it, and I, and when I say that, I'm, what I mean is, uh, when I see, when I used to see things, I would get pissed off. And now I'm just kind of like, yeah, well, that's how they are. Right. <laughs> right. You, you know mean, what you, I mean? Your brain used to, you, you used to naturally make material and now you're like, I don't want to be upset about that. <laughs> I'd rather just move on with my life. Well, it's, it's like, um, it's like when someone gets really mad about, someone can convince me of anything. Like if, it, if I was, if you were like a big Trump guy and you started talking to me about Trump, I'd be like, oh. Okay. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, sure. You you might take. Yeah, you might get in. You know, and at and at my core, I'm like, you know, I don't like Trump. I didn't vote for Trump. Right. But if you sat here and you were like, but yeah, the economy was doing so good, and and I'd be sounds like, like you did like him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like that part. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then I don't like you know sort of the social issues or whatever. Sure. I don't sure, like sure. that. Um. But yeah, that would probably be my dream, and then um to do some sort of like, you know, show like a scripted show. Yeah, make your own like show. Like a single camera kind of show. Sure. But it's just so hard. It's just like you just make content every day and you're just like, you're doing that. You know, I'm doing Snapchat. I'm doing um, I'm doing the podcast. I'm doing, uh, we have all these videos coming out. We just went and visited the world's most expensive gym. And it's just tough. It's like when you get away from, because you're lucky, you go and you act and you get into that rhythm and you, you're working with writers and I'm sure that inspires you in your own material and you're writing material too. Yeah. But when you start to do YouTube and stuff, you realize right away that like scripted stuff, it's, it just doesn't pop and it's also really hard to get the locations and what people really like on YouTube is real. Raw. Raw stuff and, yeah. and real moments and oh my God, you know. Byron fell off the shed or whatever it is, you know. Byron's always falling off the shed, by Fucking the way. Fucking Byron what is, is unreal. What is his deal with sheds? Well, you know, he has that peg leg. It's uh, He does. It's tough. He does do. Um, but you're right. People want real, authentic versions of why they liked you in the first place, which is whatever your circle that you have cultivated, whatever that may be. You know, some people do like their family is part of their bit. You know, like yeah. Kreischer, Birch family is just as much part of his personality and his act as... Anything else? Who would you say, Bert? Kreischer. Yeah, yeah Bert. Yeah, so it's yeah. like 
he's embedded that as part of kind of who he really is. So they like to see that a lot. People really do. But even that's though, not in his stand-up act. You're talking about on his no, YouTube channel. No, he does channel. put it on his stand-up. He talks about Isla all the time. Like oh, He talks oh, about his kids oh, constantly. Oh, but the kids don't come out on stage. I think they have been out with him. Oh, I mean, I they? think they don't travel with him. But I mean, I think he's he's very much, he loves putting Leanne in videos. Like he, yeah, She has her own podcast. She does. Yeah, yeah. But he Wife loves the integrating them into the system. That's yeah. just as much of a, that's what I'm, I'm just saying. They The audience loves that shit. They do. Because they want to feel like they're inside with you. My best podcast is, not my best, but my best performing podcast is my fiance. Right. Whereas I've had Phineas on, I've had Danny DeVito on, I've had, you know, like. But, but she's, <laughs> You know, easy on the eyes too. Yes. And you're so not that it's a good balance. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta give I it know, a shift. I feel bad for the people watching the two of us. For no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. They'll get over city. it. You know what they've done? They're watching something else. They're just playing this in the background. They're yeah, listening, but they're, they're watching asleep, something yeah. else. Yeah. Wait, that was your highest one. Your fiance was your highest video, huh? Yeah, because people, received, well it's received. just like what you said. People just want to know like, oh. Now is she going to come, is she going to come more into your world now? Do you think? I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know if I want that. Do you that. want that? No, you don't want I that. I mean, I prefer no. Right, but what if she's but like- But what I'm, if I need a video? <laughs> babe, go on. <laughs> she's babe. really good about that too. She'll yeah. be like, yeah, I'll do it, babe. She doesn't care. No. Was your dream when you moved here or were your was your aspirations when you were young to, to be an actor anyway? Did you want to be an actor? I think I wanted to be a comedian. Be a comedian. Yeah. Anything and, in the world of comedy. I think I wanted to be, yeah, like- um, like on a show or like, you know, I'll be on Saturday Night Live or be like, like have Jack Black's career. Something like that is obviously, would obviously be my dream. Jack Black is killing it. Jack Black's the best. He looks like he has the most fun every day. He like skates in his backyard, makes good food. Yeah. Does a, maybe a goofy, funny video. Yeah, his videos are actually really good. And then he gets to just chill out. Yeah, he makes he's, good TikTok. He seems like he's got that, uh, some people seem like they've got the system figured out. Yeah, I feel like Galifianakis figured it out too. So one of those guys where like not on social, doesn't really do much. But when he does pop up, it's so fun and wonderful. And then he just kind of just where is disappears. Zach? Have you seen him? Only God knows, man. He's, he's on his own path. I mean, you know, has I, he, he been in anything lately? Because uh, we were just talking, we were just talking about him. Like, what? Where is he? I don't. I don't know. I don't know if, what he's been in recently. I mean, so I, I love baskets for a long. I thought that was one of the yeah, best baskets shows that FX ever put together. But um, do you think he has enough money? Yes. Where he's just uh, yes. Yes. The answer is way yes. You think? Oh, I know. From The Hangover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they made a couple of bucks. How does that work? It was the highest grossing comedy franchise in, in I know that. the studio's history. I know that. But at the time, yeah. nobody knows who Zach is. That was Hangover 1. Oh, when and they, they made two, two more. Two and three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Those were paydays, baby. Oh. <laughs> yeah, those were... How much? How much? I imagine, <laughs> I imagine. Speculate. I imagine. We're speculating here. We're, specu we're yeah, speculating. The, I imagine he walked away from the entire franchise when it's all said and done with whatever, you know, third party sales and digital and blah, blah, blah. And I imagine he walked away with 50 or 60 from just that. Yeah. No. Grand. <laughs> I think he imagined. In no all, way. Yeah, probably in total. I, uh, that's just a, I'm just a, it's a stupid guess. But I do think uh, after all is said and done because of, dude, that was a cultural like an iconic film. It wasn't. I remember. So what it did in perpetuity for a decade after it released, it it was a, it like changed comedy filmmaking a little bit. People wanted to make that. Todd right. Phillips, you know, it was like, it was like another coming for him. It was like the second coming for that mm -hmm. guy. You know, like, I just feel like it, it was, it was so big culturally uh, that if, you know. And if that they, couldn't happen now. It could. It's going to take- With a comedy? Yeah, but it's going to take something really unique and, and that movie was so fucking original. It was so original and it was so simple. Right. It's, it's, I, I did a, I did a, I did a TV show, uh, that bombed miserably, that failed. We did, we got one season and it bombed. It was called Mixology. But the two writers, uh, that wrote that, John and Scott, they wrote the original version of The Hangover. They wrote the the very first version that was their movie. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they wrote this sitcom I did called Mixology that just fucking ate shit, tanked. But um, but e even they got paid. And what happened after you did um, the SNL audition? They offered you a, like a, a development deal? Yeah, when I tested for SNL, I came back to LA and then I got a phone call two days later from Lauren's office and they flew me back to New York. They made you go back. Yeah, my agents were like, this is it. You got the gig, baby. I kind of felt that way a little bit because I had had meetings with, I won't say people's names, but people that worked in the system that were like, hey, they really like you over there. Like yeah, they really yeah, want yeah. you to do the show. Yeah. 
And I was like, well, that'd be great. And then I went back and Lauren and I just sat and talked for a couple hours in his, you know, maybe it was an hour and some change in his office. And, uh, podcast. Yeah, we did a podcast. Lawrence podcast you did. Yeah, which, uh, by the way, doesn't get enough views. <laughs> a lot of people don't know about but it. But he is sponsored. That's a problem. His sponsorship is hard. Uh, Lauren should have a podcast. He 100% should. That he, would be a killer his voice, podcast. His voice is so, like, very... His, yeah, his voice you, is great. Well, you know that's where Dr. Evil came from. You know that, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, Dr. Evil. That yeah, was and um, somebody else used it. Mark McKinney used it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. kids in the hall. That was, like, an iteration I of I used him. to work there. You did? Yeah. For kids I was in the hall. Norm's, um, no, I, I, was, I was Norm's assistant. At, at SNL. Were you really? Yeah, when he did update. No shit. Yeah, yeah. That was that was like where I really Why were you a page at first or something? No, I was in the intern program. Right. I I I I did like my senior fall semester in the intern program with Karen Nathanson, mm-hmm. who was like uh in the video production thing, whatever. Then I would run out, get them food, and then they hired me for a year. Um, and then I left because I got a job at MTV for more money. They were only paying me like 400 bucks a week. But you were Norm's assistant. And I was Norm's assistant. Wow. And and I I wish I could like go back to you those days. You got any Norm stories? Yeah, like, you know, God damn. Yeah, the- I hear this is my best Norm story. Yeah. So I went to, the, the guys would like take me out, like Keckner and mm-hmm. Norm and uh, Spade. And they're all fucking gems, like really, really nice guys. They were always so nice to me. And I think they liked having me around because I was like a young kid and I would, I would, I would laugh, you know, right. and I, I was just in fucking heaven. Like, so they take me out, they took me out one night and they're getting drunk and whatever. And so I, um, I meet this Australian girl and, um, you know, I, we go back, fool around, whatever. And I come into work the next day and I turn to Norm and I go, I go, I'm going to tell you something, man. I go, and don't tell anybody. And he goes, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to tell anybody. Yeah. And I go, I go, like, last night, I went out with this girl, the girl at the bar. She goes, she, she, uh, she snorted cocaine off my cock like that. <laughs> and I was like, I know I'm 20 years old or whatever, you know? And I'm like, I, I was like, I couldn't believe it. I, I, I'm, in the, I'm in the city for the first time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and uh, he goes, wow. He goes, oh my God, that's crazy. He's, Cocaine after your cock, and I go, but don't tell anybody, you know, because I don't want anyone to know. Like, I, and so then maybe like I don't know, five minutes later, the fucking UPS guy comes in, you know, with the packages or whatever, yeah. and he's like, oh hey Daryl, and he's like, hey Norm, how you doing? He's like, hey, you see this guy right here? <laughs> guy likes to get cocaine snorted off his cock. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, I was like. <laughs> You know, now I wouldn't be embarrassed, but I'm fucking mortified. I'm like, I'm going to get fired. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and he did it. He did it for like three months. <laughs> to everybody. At, at, at any point. Like I'd be standing there with the jokes. He'd be like, Jason, go get the jokes. And he'd be, he'd be smoking in the hallway and he'd be like, no, no. Cause you know, he fucking had like a really high bar for jokes and mm-hmm. like that. I'd be like, oh my God. And then there'd be like a page standing next to him. He'd be like, Hey, you know, Jason. Guy likes to have cocaine snorting off his cock. <laughs> so fucking funny. He did it to my mom. He said it to my mom once. No. Yeah, yeah. And then I remember because I was the other part of the job was that I would work the door at the parties. And my mom came down for the party. At you the know? after party. The yeah, after yeah, party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and she uh, and I did. I was trying to keep Norm away from my mom <laughs> so he wouldn't say that to my <laughs> mom. And of course he goes, you know, Jason likes to have cocaine. And- <laughs> Snorted off his cock. And my mom was great. She goes, well, I bet you do a lot of weird stuff too, Nam. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. Oh, dude. Yeah, so that was my best. But he was, he, he was like just so fucking smart. Yes. And just so like, he told, I, the best thing he taught me, he was like, he's like, oh, he's like, oh, the punchline should be as further, as far away from the setup as you possibly could think. That mm-hmm. was what he taught me. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting. And Downey was there. That's wild. So Donnie would write a lot of his update stuff. And Frank Sebastiano was a big, he wrote a lot of the jokes. It was, it was cool. It was a cool time. If you go back and watch those updates, you're like, wow. I loved it. Like, that was they're a- so gangster. They're just like. That was my favorite. There's lots of times when the audience is not on board for several jokes. You know now when, when like Colin Jost does it and Michael Che. It, it's great. Like they're really good. Those they're jokes very, are very, very good. Writers. Jokes are fucking boom, yeah, boom, yeah, and yeah. everybody's on board with everything. Norm would go three, four jokes. Like the audience was like, no. Oh. He loved pushing the <laughs> buttons. That was like his favorite thing <laughs> on national TV. Well, that's what got him fucking fired. Talking yeah. shit about OJ. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. The balls to drop a job like that just because you you're like, no, I think it's funny. 
Yeah. And they're like, we shouldn't talk about that. He's like, no, it's funny. We're going to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. he was just so, he was, he was like the original punk rock comic. He didn't give a fuck. He never really cared at all because he knew he was always going to be good because he was so, so talented. And I don't know if that was his perspective. I'm speaking out of turn, but I imagine he just knew that like he was very good at what he did. And so he wasn't going to like kind of, you know, right. Cowtail or whatever. Did you ever hear he got hired on Dennis Miller by sending in one joke? No. <laughs> yeah. He sent an odd joke. He sent in one joke. Do you know what the joke was? God, I yeah, wish you can I look it up. But I forgot what it was. Yeah. But it then I thought that was like so brilliant. I think he, I think he what he just like did so much stand up and was such a loner and it was just on his own so much that I felt like not caring was the only way that he could, yeah, go get through it. Sure, you know, like it's a personality he, trait for yeah, sure. Though, like he, he didn't have. Bobby and uh, uh, all your friends that you have kind of like, you guys are at the store and, right, right, right. you know, and bringing, yeah. you, bringing each other up and stuff. He was just like a fucking loner. Well, a lot of the, a lot of comics are loners. It also culturally has changed so much, yeah. right? Like I think his generation was very mo- different than ours. Mm-hmm. So like New York back then too, like Colin Quinn and those guys, it's just ball busting. Keith Robinson, that's like ball busting, talk shit, yep. fuck with each other. They love each other, but it's New York so much ball busting it just me, it's like me against the world. And I'm sure prior to me, LA was that way. But like when I started to come up as a young kid, we just kind of were all so poor and scrounging together. It was like, we had to create a community because we were, it was tough. I mean, I think like we slowly but surely gravitated to people like Fahim, who you just had, Fahim was yeah. my oldest friend in comedy. We met when, oh, we, really? when we started together. He's so funny. When he moved here from Seattle, I just moved to Long Beach from, from Arizona where I went to school and we became friends instantaneously. But like, because you're in the trenches together, you're going through such a fucking shitty time and you got no money and no, I mean, all you have is aspirations. And I think you, you learn to really bond with other people through that. And that it, it creates this little community, which I think we birthed a little bit out here at the store. Cause the generation above us wasn't like that, man. It was yeah. dog, it was dog eat dog. It was more, it was like, shut the fuck up, get out of my way. Yeah, yeah. You're a young, I used to be scared you know. to go to the store when I was doing stand up. Used to be like, a nightmare. I'm not gonna fucking go there. Yeah, it used to be a nightmare. <laughs> the, the older generation were bullies, man. Everybody was a bully. Yeah. And I think that's changed. It's changed shape over time because we all realize you're much better off with a support system than yep. alone. Alone sucks, dude. Like doing anything. That's why, like, not gonna not turn, going back in, but the community that you guys birthed and created from the the vine world and the youtube creation world and all that stuff like it did birth a really safe place for you guys to all kind of work together and use each other mm-hmm. that's super healthy it's 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 it, yeah. it, it it only makes your comedy better like we said about seinfeld and these shows i just think it makes you stronger as an as you know what is it uh rising tide what is it the uh, tide rises all ships or whatever what's that fucking phrase why can i think of that yep i just think it, I it no ev- ever you know <laughs> i know what, <laughs> what is it called no what? i i've heard something like that yeah, i'm not it's too like the, smart that so. tide rises all ships it's just like everyone's going to benefit when we're all kind of in it together yeah. and we're all helping each other grow because for years as a comic you are you against the world uh-huh it's all you and then you realize you're like this is fucking miserable as shit is it, you know what I mean? You can get dark as fuck. I don't know if you've ever had a chance, but you should read Daryl Hammond's book. Um, yes. God, I, why I can't I think Darryl. of the title of that fucking book? Uh, it's all about his mom. It's like His mom was awful to him, right? Yeah, I mean, there's so much tragic shit. I mean, it's just filled with so much. It, it's, it's like... Uh, he was always super nice. He was, I mean... Sweet guy. And that was a guy that talked about, I think it's called... God, if you're not up there. That's what it is. Yeah. If you're not up there, I'm fucked. And it's like... He talked about the kind of lonely struggle that is SNL and the world of stand-up that – and performing, I should say, that like even if he did good, he would still feel a little bit of shame mm-hmm. and leave out the back door uh-huh. and not want to be on stage for the curtain call. He uh-huh. never wanted to go out there. And I think he talks about in the book he rarely was seen on the curtain calls because he just fucking hated it. Yeah, he used to like just emerge from his office and he would – he wouldn't – You'd almost forget about him. Right. And then he'd emerge from the office with like a cigarette and and then he'd go on stage and fucking kill it. And kill and then and disappear. Kill it. And it's just like Yeah. 
It's such a loner system. Yeah. Like that, that, that is why I think Norm was also so fucking brilliant. Man, that's crazy that you got coke snorted off your cock, man. <laughs> <laughs> what a world, dude. What a world. I am going to keep telling that story. <laughs> Please. Whenever somebody's like, Jason, as you know, I'm like, dude, do you know he likes to get coke snorted off his dick? I mean, how much better of a send off of a relationship if that's the last thing you ever remember about Norm? That's the, probably the greatest version of any of that yeah. stuff. And what was sad was like, I tried to, like, I would DM him and, like, try to keep up with him. Or I had his phone number at one point, and it just didn't. Never connected. He just again. wasn't, you know? Yeah. And then well, he, he seemed to get he seemed to get a lot softer over the years, like, just from what I would see online. Because when I knew him, he was pretty fucking pissed off. You're a tough guy. Yeah, tough yeah. guy. I'm not going to do that. Fuck this. And, that. and then it seemed like online he, was, he, he really opened up as he got older. What do you he, think that was? I think he just got older and maybe he got cancer and he like was like, okay. I think when you get sick, you probably gain a little bit of perspective. Yeah. Did you ever hear when he, he, he has this, this tweet series where he went to Bob Dylan's house, mm -mm. which is just insane. It's just like maybe like four years after the fact, he just sent out like 10 tweets about his night at Bob Dylan's house. <laughs> what happened? And he, he just like, he's just like, he's like, they, they asked me to come up. They summoned me to Bob Dylan's house. They called me for dinner at 845. And then the next tweet's like, I arrived. But, you know, Bob had, uh, Bob had a meal waiting for me. We sat and we talked about, I mean, I don't want to paraphrase because I don't really remember, but it's just basically he has dinner with Dylan. They play music and then Bob just like leaves. And it's just like, but just the fact that Bob Dylan called norm mcdonald to the house and was like come on it was like yeah. wow like bob dylan saw his genius you know what i mean yeah like bob dylan saw it like that's fucking cool but it is kind of that's that world of celebrity where they're like you come over eat my food i'll play music but then i'm gonna leave at any <laughs> yeah. moment <laughs> that's just great <laughs> fucking like those are stories that you hear that you're like yeah for sure that seems yeah. like like i had a friend get invited to sting's house in malibu yeah and he's like he immediately called me and was like should i go to that i'm like yeah. yeah. He's like, well, I'm afraid it's going to be this like insane, like orgy. And I'm like, what are you scared of? Yeah. Go to the orgy. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I was yeah. like, go. He's like, but I know, but what if like, what if I have to like fuck a guy? I'm like, so you <laughs> fuck a guy at Sting's house, man. Grow up. <laughs> but it's like those crazy stories to get invited to these little like Hollywood what weird happened? parties. I can't tell. It's his story to tell. Oh, I'm not what? allowed. I'm not allowed to tell. <laughs> nothing. Nothing bad happened to him. He's dead now. <laughs> 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 He's no longer with us. <laughs> no, but it, though I never am a part of those worlds. You know, like what feeds into the conspiracy theory of like a Hollywood cabal or some shit. Like there's mm -hmm. some weird Illuminati. Never been to Elon Musk's house. No, never dude, been. Oh, fucking, I've never been to anybody famous's house. Yeah. I've never been, a, <laughs> the most I've ever had is like been at a party with someone who's very famous. Right. Even still, those parties usually fucking suck. Yeah. There's like a million people and they're boring. And the only parties that are fun are, is like at our level where like Tim's house. It's like, those are fun. That was really fun. Well, it's fun. It's like food and music and sh joking around and seeing people you haven't seen in years. And it's that, that to me is the only kind of party that I really want to go to. Yeah. Like, like one night, one night I got invited to go to this thing by proxy, not truly invited. It was like, you can tag along. Right. To like Leona Di DiCaprio's birthday. Right. And I was like, I'm not going to that. Why? Because they're going to take one look at me and be like, who, why are you here? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but you can't go through life like that. Oh, uh, yes, I can. Yeah, and I'm doing. No, it's no, doing, no, and it's doing great. You missed. You missed it. <laughs> I can't go to that thing. Why? Because I would have no business. Would you feel anxiety there? Yeah, yeah, and you also would. like I'm tagging along. I'm not really invited. It was kind of like a. It was kind of like a you could sneak in with us type of shit. Uh, 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 uh. I don't want to do that shit. I don't know. I mean, I, I feel yeah, like... Yeah, but you're going because you might make some content out of that shit. Well, you're, ne you're definitely not filming Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, you are. No. <laughs> and you should. No, you're not. And you should. You're definitely not. But, you know, you, you can go and have the experience. I mean, I think t I think true when you when you meet these guys, these really high-level celebrities, you're you're disappointed. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> for sure. No, that's true. Right? You're some like... Of them, some of them are really, really cool and live up to the hype. And then some of them, you're like... Who's somebody that lived up to the hype? Jim Carrey, working for Jim was fucking oh, wild. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was yeah, my yeah. boss for a couple of years, and he was like... Oh, on that show on yeah, Showtime? Yeah, that guy, that guy was... Was he around a lot? Uh, no, no, no. But he was there sometimes. No, yeah, he was there when he needed to be there. Right. 
And he was... Wait, on, was he in the show too? No, he wasn't. He just produced it. He was an EP. He was unequivocally exactly what I wanted him to be, you know? He was like a god to me as a kid. That was like my fucking literal hero. Yeah. Like Eddie, every facial emulation I had was because of him. It was like I was just trying to be that guy. Yeah. Uh, we met him at the powerful Sonic dude. premiere. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was... We, we were all fucking on Mars after we met him. He's a cool dude, man. He's he probably lived up to the the hype. You know, he's just about as real and down to earth as he can be for someone who is yeah a megastar. I think somebody posted the other day something that blew my mind that the Mask, Dumb and Dumber, and Ace Ventura dropped all in '94. I think that's right. No way. You know, I swear, I swear to God, somebody mask, was like Dumb and Dumber. And wait, Ace Ventura. I, I have to look it up because I was like, somebody had said. Tell me this isn't the craziest shit you've ever fucking seen. And I was like, how could this be? I, I, I just, I, I was like, there's no way they all came. And obviously, because you shoot film, people don't realize, you know, people are like, oh, that movie comes out this yeah. year. And you're like, yeah, they shot it three fucking years ago. You know, yeah. sometimes that's just the way that film goes. But like, here, let's see. I'm going to, I want to, I just want to know just because. The hardest I ever laughed in a movie theater was the trailer for uh, Pet Detective 2. So funny. That's the man. hardest I ever left because it starts out and you think it's an action movie and it's like from the depths of the jungle, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like there is one man who will fight and then Jim Carrey just pops up. And he All just right. Goes. So here, look at this. The Mask, 94. Dumb and Dumber, 94. Ace Ventura, 94. Unreal. I mean, you want to talk about a fucking hit machine? <laughs> 94 Ace Ventura, 94 The Mask, 94 Dumb and Dumber. Then the very next year... Uh, in 95 was Batman Forever, where he was the Joker. Wow. And Tommy Lee Jones was Two-Face, and then Ace Ventura, and the, then the Cable Guy, then Liar Liar the very next year, Truman Show the very next year. That's a run. Yeah, the motherfucker made bangers, dude. This guy was, it, you know, he still is. I'm and then always, Eternal Sunshine a few years later to, like, you know, I'm always impressed scope. with him just, like, on a talk show. Like, remember when he used to go on Letterman and stuff, and it'd be, like, insane? Yeah. It'd be, like, it'd be like fresh material. Right. And he'd just fucking crush. And now he's extremely zen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I mean, foolishly asked him one time at a party. We were at the fucking uh, Hollywood Tower Hotel, and we were having, like, a nice conversation. And it was, like, going along too well. So at some point, I was going to fuck it up. Yeah. And I said... Where are you living now, Jim? <laughs> like, as if to say, are you in L.A.? Yeah, like, do yeah, you still yeah. live in L.A.? Yeah. I said, where are you living now? And he's like, where do we live? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. And he's like, where do we live? Where do we live? And I immediately knew I was in, like, some philosophical trap. And I was like, fuck, I'm never going to be able to get out of this. That's I was really like, you know, story. if we're present, we <laughs> live everywhere. You know, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was just, he and was. And you're not that guy. No, no. You're not the philosophical, fuck, like, no, dude, like, deep, I, yeah. like, spiritual no. guy. I live in the valley. That's what I would have yeah, said. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no, I live in the valley. That's awesome. But I think he was the, yeah, he was the one that lived up to the most hype of all. I can't even, I really can't name one that didn't live up to the hype because I don't really have any celebrity. Oh man, I can't wait to, I don't, I never had that. Right. He was probably one of the only ones that I actually was like, really wanted to meet bad. Yeah. And there was no other guy as a kid. I mean like Schwarzenegger and those like action heroes when I was a kid. Yeah. But that's, I don't know. That's, I know that was all. Tom Cruise I met, he was cool. Really? Yeah, he's the fucking man. Well, he's a, I mean, he's like the and last I'm not even movie like star. a huge, like, I'm, I mean, I like Tom Cruise. He made some hits. Yeah. I used to jerk off to Jerry Maguire. I used to love that opening scene when they're fucking. It was one of my favorites. I would rhyme sorry, what did you say? I used to jerk off to Jerry Maguire. The scene where he's where he's with Rod Tidwell. Show me the money! <laughs> That's what made me come. You really? No, the scene, <laughs> the, the very first scene, he's in a, he's, a, he's fucking. And I used to, I thought that was so hot. I used to rewind it and jerk off to it. I like that joke in your, um, in your new special about, uh, Having a finger in your finger in my asshole, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an elevated claim, man. And and every after every show, when I used to do that, people would be like, "Is that is that is that? Do you do that? Do you do that? Don't you hate that?" I'm like, "You'll never know, man. <laughs> the beauty is, you'll never know." I hate when people take things too literally. And, but that's the kind of the that's like the beauty of comedy. It's like, well, I'm not going to tell you even if it was true or wasn't true. It's like right. just make it up on you. The whole point of the whole special was you construct comedy in your own way. That's what the cheeseburger was a metaphor for, and yeah. I talk about it is like. You're going to build this the way you want to build it. So whether or not it's real, just fucking eat it up, oh, dummy. No, that's, that's it. I was like, who gives a shit? Just enjoy it. It doesn't matter if any of it. By the way, none of it's real. If you want to be one of these philosophical kooks, 
None of it's real. Right. We're all just fucking having fun and trying to make something that makes you feel something different. D- don't you feel like, I don't know, like being a comedian in this age, it's, 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 it's kind of a pain in the ass. In a way, I understand what you, I, I know what you mean, but also we don't play that game anymore. It's like for a while people were like, oh, is com- what's going to happen with comedy? What can you say? And blah, blah. No, man, it, that, that, that's bullshit. The, I think that's an echo chamber of the world that we live in. But the truth is the rest of the country, most people want to just feel normal and laugh at bullshit again. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't believe that there's this. It's nice that it's dying down. I just don't believe it ever was that real. I think it was inflated and we thought it was yeah. real. And then we realized it was not at all. I think we were trapped in our houses over COVID. And, Correct. And, and, <laughs> and everybody and, started to go a little yes, nuts. Everyone became this panicky, <laughs> loopy, <laughs> like, you know, uh, they're going to come after us. We're not allowed. We're not going to be allowed to say anything anymore. Yeah, yeah. It was all bullshit. That's not true at all. It's just America's not any more free or any less free than it ever was for language. It's just we made it seem that way. Yeah. You know, What's, unless Google and YouTube keeps restricting us. What's What's, t- what's your take on Kanye? I watched the end of Good Dude. Great message. <laughs> what he's saying makes sense. Uh, last night I watched the end of You People, which was good, and they played a Kanye song, yeah. and I was like, "Well, oh, Netflix doesn't give a fuck." Well, that was probably made significantly before all this bullshit. No, the movie went up last night. No, I'm thing. saying, but the but the they probably had that inserted a long time ago. Take a song yeah, out of the, out the movie. I guess. Easily. Yeah, that's true. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I guess that's true. You could. Maybe it's a choice. Maybe it is. What was the What was the song? Uh, uh, N words in Paris. I think it was. Denton, Denton, ball so hard, motherfuckers gonna try it. Yeah, it's a, yeah. I think that's at the end. That shit cray. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know it. That's a great song. It's a great. Song. So when I go to Runyon now and I listen to Kanye. You know, do you I'm, feel weird as a Jew uh, that you wouldn't, you shouldn't be listening I, to? If him? other people come, I turn it down because I, I don't wear headphones to protect my ears. So uh, I just listen to it on my my phone. You're that guy. You're running outside with the phone outside. I hate that guy. Fuck that guy. Get some headphones. Grow up. What are you talking about? Protect your ears. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want damage. I hike every day, so I don't want ear damage. I'm already. Ca- I already can barely hear. What? What'd you say? You can barely hear now. No, I can hear you, but like I, I have trouble like at like a place or. You do. A little bit. No, that's sad. I, yeah. lo- I have a headphones are like a major part of my life. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> what do I think about Kanye? Long story short. Um, I, I, you don't have to give me an opinion, but. No, I will. I think it's fucking, I think it's, it's. Oh, what the fuck, bro? That's, that's fucked up. so weird. Yo, yo! <laughs> that's so Andrew, weird. are you playing a prank on me? No. Dude, that's weird we're talking about Kanye. That may be the weirdest thing that's happened to me in a that long time. That was weird we were talking about Kanye and the camera's and the lights, out, no, right? I don't know. Let me see. Is this just a prank? No, I swear to God, it's not. No, everything's still rolling. The cameras are still on? Oh, good. Which means we got it for the podcast. Holy shit. Dude, is there someone out there? No, no, no. No, so I, there must have been like a surge or something. <laughs> but the cameras didn't go out. No, everything is on. Holy crap! That, so that, ah! that may be the weirdest thing. I've okay, ever. let's just stop talking about Kanye. Look what you did. Let's, let's, talk, let's talk about something else. Look what you fucking did. I know, man. I didn't know he's everywhere. All right, well, let's sign off before we get murdered. Uh, Holy crap. What a good episode we've just had. The lights just went out in the middle of it in a cre- in the creepiest way possible. If you're listening, go on YouTube and watch it because I don't know why that happened. I have no explanation for that. But none of the cameras went out. No, everything is still rolling, and they'll, you'll see that. All right, we're going to end the episode as fast as we can. One word or one phrase. Look in, that epi- look in that camera right there. Say one word or one phrase to take us out. Go ahead. Uh F- fucking go for it in life. Do not listen to other people. Kanye. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers.